Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of Diplo Strats. Uh, you will see a slightly sped up video in the background. The reason for that is that I initially tried to record this live and I found out that I cannot negotiate and commentate at the same time at all. So I'm recording a commentary track over it afterwards. Now, uh, it's at about three times speed, but it would be pretty fast anyway because this is speed press. Now, speed press is diplomacy's answer to something like bullet chess. Um, you get five minutes in the phase to do everything you need to do. That includes negotiating with every power, entering your orders, obviously thinking through all your orders and making agreements about them and whatever. Um, five minutes sounds like a long time. <laughs> it's really not, trust me. Uh, these games, they used to be kind of common maybe like seven or eight years ago. Um, they don't happen anymore. And I think the reason for that is just the advancing internet for the most point. part. Uh, back in the day we were happy to <laughs> fill in everything in drop-down boxes in that amount of time and constantly refresh the page to see new messages and everything. Uh, obviously nowadays you don't want to do something like that. And basically every diplomacy site is still kind of stuck in, in the phase of I need to refresh to see the new messages which just makes playing that kind of thing really awkward. What you will notice uh, going on on the page here is that those little message icons are appearing without me having to refresh. And you might also notice that you don't recognize this board at all. <laughs> that is because the new web diplomacy uh, beta just launched, and I'm actually playing this on the beta. Um, it's honestly amazing. I started out playing on web diplomacy uh, 12 years ago? I've been very involved with the site since, so obviously I am a total web dip shell. Take that with a grain of salt. But I really, really enjoy playing on this interface. Um, and it's especially great for these speed press games. This is the first one I've played in years. Uh, anyway. <laughs> That's a whole lot of chat about stuff that's unrelated to the actual game itself. Uh, you will, of course, be able to see every message I send in here. Um, you can read them as they're coming up. They're on the side of the screen there. But I should go into a little more depth about what I was actually thinking on each phase. So in the first phase, you just saw me demilitarize Galicia. That was because the Austrian requested a DMZ, and obviously that gave me a bit of an cho interesting choice. I could either go to Galicia and break that DMZ for the immediate potential gain of Budapest, right? Or just harassing the Austrian in general, commit hard and get an early advantage. Or I could just hold in Warsaw and not do anything. And I decided to hold in Warsaw and not do anything. I think in general, I'm more open to doing stuff like jumping into Glacier in 1901 than most strong diplomacy players are. But I still think it's better if you're not 100% sure that, that the other people are on your side yet, not to commit outright. Because by doing that, you're saying to Austria, I'm fighting you. And when you do that, you say to the other two powers, you get to pick which side you're going on. Like Italy, do you want to side with Austria or me? Turkey, do you want to side with Austria or me? And when you do that, <laughs> you basically hedge your bets on your negotiation being better than the other person's. And it's not always just about negotiation either. It can be about just whether the other person thinks you're the right player to work with. If you're strong, if you're a strong negotiator, they might take that as a sign that they shouldn't work with you. Um, and in fact, you see, <laughs> I was saying I wouldn't jump into Glacier in 1901. I didn't in spring 1901. I did in fall 1901 because I thought, okay, I'll commit to this uh, Turkey-Italy thing. Italy had wanted me to go and attack Austria. I was thinking, okay, well, if I've got Italy on side, at least if he's committing, Turkey is probably going to commit as well, and then I can take my pick between those allies after Austria is gone. Hopefully everyone will be on side. Turkey was not down for that. Turkey just went all out against me. 
Uh, and now they're in Armenia, Black Sea, and Bulgaria. That's a really painful position for me, especially considering my one unit in Galicia is probably going to get cut right here by the Austrian. So they can push me out of Romania very, very easily. I did try and excuse this by saying to the Austrian, oh, I didn't know you wanted a demilitarized zone there. I was thinking you wanted to bounce me. <laughs> I have no idea whether the Austrian believed that. Um, he did actually message back quite late in the phase saying that he wanted the bounce, not the bounce, the DMZ in Galicia. But the fact it had been a DMZ on the previous turn means most people would kind of naturally assume that it would be a DMZ again. Something you might find interesting here is my builds. I went with Army St. Petersburg, Army Moscow, and that seems a bit weird when you consider that I'm under attack in the south, I'm under significant pressure in the south. You might have thought maybe I should go for Army Moscow, Army Warsaw, because Army Warsaw at least can defend myself in Galicia, right? But I'm kind of thinking, okay, if this Austria-Turkey thing happens and they start pushing me back, sure, I can hold a little bit longer if I build Army Warsaw. But ultimately, I probably lose Romania and Sevastopol anyway. There's not much I can do to hold those. So I should look for where I can expand while dedicating minimal units to defending myself in the south. If I dedicate minimal units to the south, then I kind of have the situation where, yes, I'm going to lose Romania, yes, I'm going to lose Sevastopol, but I can push somewhere else and make gains and solidify a position. I don't want to be left on just Warsaw and Moscow. And I think if I dedicate everything to the south, I basically just say that that's my ultimate... Um, position. I'm just going to end up with Moscow and Warsaw, because I'm not gaining anything in the north, other people are going to be stronger there. Sweden, ultimately, as soon as England or Germany gets strong, or they just decide to work together, that's just gone. So, Norway and Sweden both are actually quite a solid position together. Um, and that's kind of my goal here. I'm going to say... I'm going to try and just secure Norway and Sweden. I'm putting an army into Norway, so I'm not going any further, and I'm making sure that I don't have to go any further, because, you know, I'm working with Germany here, but I don't have the units in, in the right positions to push out further. So, <laughs> the... So I have an excuse to just sit there and defend myself. And even if I get pushed out of Romania and Sevastopol, I think I then have the units that I can send things south later on if the Austria-Turkey alliance breaks down. Now, I am still negotiating with the south. I'm trying to get them to agree to things. And it kind of works here in that Austria decides to go into Bulgaria, but Austria also supports Turkey into Romania, so kicks me out of there. And that... That, that was just a really odd move set. As you can see, I was confused about it at the time as well, <laughs> looking at it plenty. Um, I was thinking it was probably arranged. Looking back, I don't think it was. I think they probably talked it out afterwards, but either way, they'd work together against me, so my concern now was turtling up. So I have a bit of guesswork on the south. I've only got these three units here, and they're not all in position to support Hold Sevastopol. I could tap Romania, like I've just entered, and hope that uh, they are going in from anywhere other than Romania, or I could put in what I just entered there, Sevastopol to Romania, uh, with double support, <laughs> and hope they're going Romania into Sevastopol with double support, and that it counters um, that. At the end of the day, I think I decide to go with this triple attack, just because I think they're more likely to go with the with the attack that's less likely to be countered, right? <laughs> this is the much less likely move set for me to enter. People would just think I will support Hold Sevastopol and tap Romania. Um, so by doing the unexpected thing, I think it's a little more likely to work. Now you can also see Italy has managed to break into Trieste. They're in Tyrolia, they're in Albania, they're in Ionian Sea. They're basically my savior here. 
because if Italy can get a secure enough foothold, everyone will have to turn around the other way, and I'll be in a really solid position. <laughs> I'd be really happy with that. Um, unfortunately, I can't do much to help that, because I just need to hang on to my south with these three units. I've sent a ton of units up north, and you'll notice I actually sent my Moscow unit up north as well. Uh, which... That, that was really debatable, but I I had a really interesting situation on the turn before where Germany was saying they wanted my support in Skagerrak. I didn't really want to give that because I felt like Germany might just go for Sweden afterwards. So I took Norway instead. So I risked annoying Germany with the move set I made against England, and that's a really terrible thing to do, generally speaking. You don't want to annoy both of your neighbours with the same move on one front, <laughs> because then, of course, they just ally against you. I figured if I send St. Petersburg up north, it gives me just a little bit of extra uh, possibility to convince England not to bother tapping Norway. Um... Obviously, if I just had Norway and Sweden there, England could tap with two, Germany could tap with two, and I lose both of them. If I have three units, uh, St. Petersburg, Norway, and Sweden, then St. Petersburg is always going to support Norway, so England can never get anything else of doing that. They're just giving something to Germany, and that doesn't make a ton of sense for them. Now, you'll notice England is being attacked by France at the same time. Uh, England really had a rough go of it this game. <laughs> I think they ended up agreeing to basically everything France wanted them to do in order to try and get France off their back, and France just kept stabbing them over and over and over again. Uh, and, you know, you can't fault England for going with something like that because they were in a position where they probably are going to lose if France doesn't stop attacking them. They can't really counter France very well, uh, especially since I've taken one of their centers off of them here. So they have to find some kind of compromise, and the compromise that they find doesn't work. Okay, so now you see England is just getting completely destroyed at this point. Uh, France goes... France doesn't quite do the optimal moveset. They do go into Western Mediterranean as well. Um, they should really have gone north if they wanted to take out England as fast as possible. But with Germany coming into North Sea as well, it's just a foregone conclusion. England is going to die. Um, England can perhaps offer Germany support into Belgium... Uh, well, not Belgium, English Channel. That kind of area in the hope that Germany will leave them alone. But I think it, it's much more likely that Germany will just take what they can get here. Uh, so, this last phase in the south as well was actually super interesting for me because the, the triple attack that I ended up doing on Romania... I was assuming that would counter a triple attack the other way into Sevastopol, right? And it doesn't end up doing that. Instead, it ends up, uh, well, with <laughs> getting my fleet into Romania with no counter into Sevastopol. Which, I mean, that's just beautiful for me, right? It the, That was the case because this Austria-Turkey alliance wasn't really an Austria-Turkey alliance. Austria had indeed stabbed Turkey going into Bulgaria on the last turn, and that had kind of made them be in a much worse uh, diplomatic situation. Turkey just decided to take back Bulgaria instead of attacking me further, and obviously that gives me a bit of a lifeline. I managed to get the build, which is huge, uh, getting the build in Sevastopol here. I was anticipating losing one in the south, gaining one in the north, and staying even, but I get to build another army. Armies are really nice, because they form this nice defensive core around my centers. But, I don't think I need the fleet in Romania. Actually, Italy was trying to convince me to build Fleet Sevastopol on that last build phase, I could have gone too into Black Sea with that, but the problem there is that Bulgaria taps Romania, Armenia taps Sevastopol, and suddenly no attack into Black Sea is ever successful. 
and they probably just use Black Seed to support one of those two moves and get in eventually. So I built an army instead, and now I'm thinking, okay, this fleet in Romania is really, really useless to me. What am I supposed to do with it? And I, I was thinking about that, I just think, maybe it's better just to let it go? As you can see, my first move set was not along those lines. I was thinking, maybe I can help Austria out more. But I did actually offer Turkey, hey, look, you can convoy Armenia into Romania here with Black Sea. Just support that, and then you can blow up my unit. And here, you'll note I changed my support hold of Romania with Sevastopol to just a hold. And this would have put me in a really nice position, I think, because I lose the... So I lose the fleet, obviously not great, but it's a fleet off the board. I don't need that fleet anyway, um, and Armenia would be out, so Sevastopol's not threatened anymore. I can focus basically entirely on the north, or I can go against Turkey in the Balkans uh, without having that useless fleet that can't really support anything. And I kind of end up getting my wish. He does blow up the fleet in Romania, um, he just does it from Budapest instead which is minorly annoying, but you'll note I did support Austria into Budapest that turn as well, and I attempted to support Austria into Bulgaria, and I think with that, I won Austria's support in general, which could be massive in terms of the effect that it has this game. Having just someone on side is really nice. The of course, there is the issue, what am I going to get with Austrian support? Sure, I'll get Romania, I don't have any fleets in the south anymore, and Turkey is in Black Sea. So, it's not like I'm gonna actually get into the Turkish homeland. <laughs> I'm just kind of in a stronger defensive position, I suppose. But, I'm kind of okay with that. I'm just gonna go forward, I'm gonna take Romania, and then I'm gonna consider my options from there, Maybe there's the option of going with Italy and having, if Italy takes Trieste and Serbia and then goes against Turkey, uh, Turkey should rotate away from me and maybe I can take Budapest and Vienna at the same time. And then I also have the choice of whether to side with Italy or Turkey in that situation. So for now I just go for Romania. As you can see, my attempt to go for Romania doesn't work because I was way too paranoid about a potential three-way attack on Sevastopol. I end up support holding it with Ukraine instead of supporting my move with Ukraine. And supporting my move with Ukraine would have actually made it work here. I would have gotten Romania, which would have been very nice. Nice thing is, I don't have to disband because that fleet already came off the board. So I'm not losing anything here. It would have just been another unit. What would that unit have been if I got a build? <laughs> I feel like maybe the correct answer should have been Fleet St. Petersburg North Coast, because that gives me the most growth opportunities. But I like building armies as Russia. I like securing basically the entire front before I go any further than Scandinavia. And so, most likely, it would have been Army Warsaw. <laughs> I don't like building fleets, because say if you build fleet in St. Petersburg North Coast and you start overextending towards the west, um, you can't use that fleet for defense if things start going wrong. It's just completely stuck, right? If the south, if I end up uh, getting pushed back by Austria and Turkey in the south al aligning, or by Italy and Turkey, who have started working together now, um, with on Serbia, then that fleet is not useful to me at all. <laughs> You'll see some f fun press here where I'm just trying to convince Turkey to, to come on my side, but I don't... Like, I can't think of a great way to convince him to come on side, so I'm just mainly hoping that Italy stabs him instead. And if Italy stabs him, I'm in a great spot, right? I think that that should end up perfect. Okay, let's relax for a moment. 
Okay, so in the north, England is actually repeatedly asking me for support to Denmark at this point. And I keep agreeing and I keep thinking maybe this is something I can do, but I don't think I actually ever go through with it. Just because... So, what, what does supporting England to Denmark do? You see I put it in here, right? It ends up weakening Germany a little bit, and if I'm moving to Cilicia, like my moves here say I should, then weakening Germany a little bit is great. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> I give myself a little bit more an advantage. But if I'm supporting England in, I'm not getting the build there. England then will need to stay in Denmark forever, because that's kind of their only reasonable centre to stay in. They're going to lose Edinburgh and Liverpool, ultimately, anyway. So if I want to get to the German homeland from the north with my army in Sweden, I need to force my way through Denmark anyway, which kind of means that the English fleet ends up being an enemy unit regardless. Now, I was tempted to support England into Denmark, despite this, but as you can see, I, I kind of decided against it. Um, in fact, I think England got convinced here by France to support France into Holland instead of uh, moving into Denmark themselves, which was, like, that was just bad, I think. Um, I don't think, her, I think that gave Helgoland a really big chance of just being blown up. But I was kind of happy to hear it because it meant I didn't have to commit against the German. Um, then France asks me for support into North Sea at the last minute. So I end up changing my orders to basically save the English fleet anyway at the last second. Uh, and I don't end up taking advantage because if I was 100% committing for going to, uh, to going for Germany... I should have entered Galicia to Cilicia here. Um, I'm not going to gain anything more from Budapest, Vienna, Romania, you know, while this Italy-Turkey thing is going, so I might as well just head off in that direction. As it was, I stabbed Germany for basically nothing, <laughs> and I lost a good amount of his trust here, so I think that ended up being a mistake. But Germany ends up telling me, you know, just don't do this again, and we'll be okay. Uh, and from that, I kind of just go, well, all right, then I guess. I'll let France attack you, or I'll just stay on your side. This is if my recollection is correct. I think it's correct. Yeah. I just end up support holding myself. Say, okay, you two fight it out. I'm not going to gain anything yet. But if France gets far enough into your lands that you end up getting weak... I'm going to walk in behind you. And obviously I don't tell him that, but I think that's my easiest route to expand. I can't actively take Denmark by fighting. My positions, my position isn't correct for that. So, I just got to go for that. In the south, this turn Italy stabbed Turkey. Well, last turn. So suddenly Turkey is finally willing to work with me again, like after everything. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to flip straight to Turkey's side. Because that's what gets me centers. I can get one center from Romania if I go against Turkey. And then Italy gets everything else. <laughs> Whereas if I stick with Turkey for the moment, I can take Budapest with their support. And that, that's like... That just sounds great. Um... <laughs> There was an interesting situation here as well, where Italy... I basically asked Italy, hey, can you put me in Vienna? We could take out Austria this turn together if you put me in Vienna. And the hope with that was that Turkey would take out uh, Budapest, I believe. And Austria just gets wiped off the board and I have one less person to worry about here. Uh, because Austria is kind of a wild card at the moment, and Austria is a wild card I want to push into. So I don't want these two unit support holding each other. If there's just one person in Budapest and I have Vienna, I'm in a much better position for attacking them. So I do convince Italy to support me to Vienna here with Tyrolia, and then... <laughs> Germany is saying, look at this Italy-France alliance, it's terrifying, which is completely reasonable. 
rally people against it. Also completely reasonable. I'm gonna tap Tyrolia. There it is. <laughs> and I'm just like, no! Italy is supporting me to Vienna with Tyrolia. I have to change all my orders at the last second. Um, and yeah, that's how this comes about. You then see me end up changing my orders to go to Bohemia and Galicia, and suddenly Italy is like, well, now you just look like you're attacking me. <laughs> you completely stabbed me on that phase. You're just moving towards my units instead of taking my support, and you didn't attack Turkey at all. Uh, so Italy kind of reasonably thinks I was lying about the German thing. <laughs> it's actually something that was the truth for once, even though Germany didn't actually do it, they went to Burgundy. So, yeah, that ends up being super interesting. As you can see in the north, Germany has basically vacated all of their home supply centers right now. And they're saying, hey, you can move in if you want to. And I'm saying, well, I'm thinking that would be nice, but I'd much rather move in when I can take everything at once. <laughs> And I'm also, I'm also saying, no, I don't want to move in because I need your armies on the front line against France, which is completely reasonable. But honestly, if he had moved out of Denmark as well, I would have been much happier to just move in behind him and take everything. Denmark, Kiel, Berlin, Munich. If I can get all four of those, I'm basically getting everything I want to get from the north, because that's my general, it's my general strategy as... Uh, as Russia, is if you're focusing on the north, you take Norway and Sweden first, then you go for Denmark, if you can get it, and then you go for Kiel, Berlin, Munich. Um, and then you can try and push further if you want to, but if you can secure that line, that's a really solid line to sit on. So that, that's my current goal, and I'm not going to go for it until I see an opportunity to take all of it more or less at once. Uh, because those German units being further forward are much more useful than mine right now, and if I suddenly become a giant, that's going to let everyone else on the board, as to my intentions. So now, Turkey wants to build a fleet. They want to build a fleet in Ankara, uh, and then funnel the two fleets out. That's kind of painful for me, because they could well move to Black Sea with it, and that just makes them incredibly annoying to me again. <laughs> But it's better than another army. Um, obviously, Turkey can't build another army here. That would just be ludicrous. So they're going to go with two fleets. They're going to try to funnel them out. Seems like a really difficult uh, way to do it, but hey. Now, here's where the decision kind of gets interesting in the south. Because I also have Italy saying, you know, I know you stabbed me. But we've got a Mega Turk right now, and if we don't face down this Mega Turk, we are just both going to die. I don't know that that's true. Now, Turkey has a ton of armies, which is really bad for me, because usually in a Juggernaut you want to get Russia, Romania, Budapest, and Vienna. And the reason the Juggernaut kind of works well is that Turkey has enough fleets that Russia doesn't have to worry about Vienna, Budapest, Romania. They can just leave three units there. Turkey can leave three units on Trieste, Serbia, Bulgaria, and they're kind of balanced and even, and, you know, they can keep moving along. With, uh, a, I think that's five army Turkey? <laughs> I'm a lot less confident about that, um, because th even if we kind of figure out the split that I want, I end up with a position where the Turkey has like a ton of armies crammed into the continent, not many fleets, and those fleets probably can't push out to Ionian, so my centers become a hell of a lot more tasty for them. Uh, <laughs> I would really prefer that not to happen. So, as you can see, I end up actually cutting a deal with Turkey on the first turn, support offering to them support to Budapest and moving my own unit into Romania behind, cutting Vienna uh, in the north. I actually tell Italy about all of this, and I'm saying, okay, I'm doing this right now, but in the fall, I'm going to stab for Budapest, and you, you can support me into Vienna. We'll end up getting 
uh, a really nice position on Turkey. You can stab for Serbia and Greece at the same time. Well, not stab, just continue attacking. Um, and Turkey should be just completely wiped out of this area. And that... Uh, I mean... Okay, it's a kind of reasonable plan, with the exception that... If you look at the position it leaves me in, right, after I've taken Budapest, Vienna in here, I'll end up with Romania, Budapest, Vienna. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, Italy will end up with Serbia, Greece. I end up with a really, really angry Turk if I do this. So who is that Turk going to attack? That Turk is obviously going to attack me. It's kind of a balanced position if Turkey defends themselves fully, but are they going to when I just screwed them over? That's a big question. And it's one that... Yeah, I think it, I, I'm just wrong on that front. I was wrong to do this. So I do end up going through with it. I do end up going for Budapest here. Um, <laughs> I think that was a mistake. Uh, as you can see, I end up actually issuing a bunch of orders into the German centers here, at least to start with. Uh, I'm trying to recall what turn this was. Yeah, okay. So I issue a bunch of orders into the German supply centers. I actually changed them right towards the end of the phase uh, because I wanted to keep Germany on side. Um, I think that's better talking about towards the end of the phase anyway. So I, I end up supporting Italy to Vienna, which is actually even worse. <laughs> The, my initial plan. It gives Italy a complete chokehold uh, around Budapest, right? So he's got no real incentive to work with me anymore. He can just continue attacking me up there. And, and like, he could try and work with me to get me to push him through into uh, Smyrna, Constantinople, etc. But I have so little ability to do that with the with a Turkish fleet in Black Sea, that I don't know that that would be worth it for him. So I don't remember why I agreed to do this. The Helping him into Vienna was a terrible idea. I should have asked him for support into Vienna at the very least. I think I just wanted Austria out of the game to st st so that I didn't have to uh, message everyone. <laughs> but, yeah. It was... This was not smart. This was probably my worst move in this game. So I do explain to Turkey what the reasoning was behind my stab. I think this is always an important thing to do when you stab someone. Uh, especially when you stab someone hard. If you've made a bad stab on someone like this, explaining the reasoning kind of allows you to apologize for it at the same time because you can explain the reasoning as in hey you know i thought about doing this this is my reasoning for doing so now looking back at it that looks like a worse idea than it did at the time Ugh, this is a five minute phase game that's you know it, it really doesn't give you time to think through these things and uh, it sounds really cheesy, but apologizing like that can be huge. Like, it can get people back on your side. It definitely did not in this circumstance. Uh, Turkey was just irritated with me. So, yeah. <laughs> not my finest hour. I do end up getting two builds. Um, that is because I, I pick up Romania and Budapest. Uh... I end up building them defensively against the Turk, but then I'm looking at the board and just going, ugh, what have I done? Uh, I just need to convince Italy to work with me here, and that's kind of all I can do. I think Italy has too strong of a position on me um, to continue anyway. Okay, commentary break. I do want to say, I this is, like, much, much faster than my usual pace. <laughs> I hope you understand that. <laughs> well, I know you guys will understand that. Um, I, this is, like, 
doing a, a commentary after the fact on a game that's been sped up this much is kind of interesting. Usually you get to pick how much you want to talk about each individual phase. And yeah, the, this kind of pacing throws me off a little bit, but I hope it's still reasonable. If you have any feedback, let me know. Um, I did also want to quickly plug this. Uh, so this game was part of the Nexus Press League, um, which is a Speedboat League, not Speedboat League, Speed Press League. Man, my brain is fried. It's like super hot here at the moment, so I'm going to give that as the excuse. <laughs> But yeah, so this is part of the Nexus Speed Press League, and Speed Press is this five minute per phase game. The problem is, of course, you need to get a bunch of people who are willing to dedicate about three hours to a game to do this. Uh, it will probably be less in the future because they're looking at turning it into rulebook press, which means you don't negotiate on builds and retreats. Uh, but you still need seven people who are willing to spend like two hours um, together playing the game. And that's kind of difficult to find when <laughs> speed press hasn't been a thing for the last eight years. So if you're at all interested in trying this out, there'll be a link to Nexus Leagues in the description. I strongly advise you check it out. These are great fun to play. Uh, and just have a look for their speed press section. Alright, back to the game. You'll see I am attacking Italy. I actually cut a bit of a lucky break here, um, in that Italy did end up building two fleets. Two fleets is very good for me, because they were basically agreeing that they'd go and fight France. And, you know, fighting France <laughs> means hopefully they can't dedicate enough units to fight me properly. That, that's so-so. I think they still probably could, especially if they could get Turkish support to do it. But the main thing is Venice has to move to Piedmont. And if Venice moves to Piedmont, that's something that can't go for me. In the end, end of the day, I don't end up uh, actively attacking them. I just end up tapping Vienna to make sure that I don't lose Budapest. But, of course, I lose Budapest anyway, because like Budapest is completely indefensible in this position. And things go from bad to worse, because not only do I lose Budapest to the Italian, um, if you look up in the north, there's German fleets in Skagerrak, Denmark, and Baltic Sea. <laughs> and the German armies have turned around to Kiel and Munich, which is incredibly painful. I'm going to lose Sweden this phase. I won't necessarily lose Norway. Um, in fact, I can guarantee that I don't lose Norway, but the fact I'm losing Budapest at the same time, and... They can probably push Romania. Oof. That's just super painful. <laughs> so how do I get out of this situation? Well, that's the answer. Do you see that message right there? France going, can you get me into Munich? That's an absolute godsend for me to see, because that shakes up the dynamic of the board. I needed France to... Uh, well, France had two options here. They could have attacked Italy... So sent units south and just gone, okay, I'm gonna stale my, myself down here and not grow while Germany attacks Russia. Um, or they could go into Germany. And going into Germany means stabbing someone who just committed hard to their alliance. It's sending everything the other way. France ends up agreeing to go into Edinburgh and Munich at the same time here. I end up agreeing to support the moves, basically ditching the possibility of getting anything at all myself. I'm just saying I'm 100% willing to give you everything up here, just attack Germany. But by doing that, they're basically solidifying an RG alliance. Because after Germany gets stabbed here, what are they going to do? They're 100% going to go all out against France. There's no possibility they do anything else. So that's my lifeline. I end up with an ally because France ends up stabbing here. I'm just more than happy for France to throw me that lifeline in general. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I do try and get back into Budapest this way. Uh, and I think I do actually manage it because I talk to the Italian, basically say I'm aligning myself with you. <laughs> um, 
So I don't lose anything down there, I only lose Sweden in the north to the German, and that's an easy thing to retake here. That's not, you know, that that's not an issue anymore because France just moved into Holland, Munich, uh, and Edinburgh at the same time, and suddenly Germany is just like, okay, I'm gonna turn full force around. I'm just gonna work with Russia forever now. And I, that's the happiest thing in the world for me to hear from this position. <laughs> so, okay, um, let's look at the Italian position right now. So Italy gets really angry. Look at this. Uh, <laughs> Italy's press, to me, this phase is like, you've thrown France the game. We cannot catch up with a France board top now that France has taken Edinburgh, Holland and Munich. That's a really secure position. I think what Italy missed here is the fact that Germany would go all out against France. Um, technically, if Germany was just 100% reliant on self-preservation, Germany probably keeps the fleet on the fleets on the board, goes for Norway, tries to secure a position in Scandinavia, because that's the hardest position to get knocked out of. But Germany doesn't do that. Germany is going to try and reclaim their territory against France, and they're going to do that at any cost. In fact, they actually keep this army that retreats to Yorkshire on the board, which is ludicrous, like, if you're trying to go for survival. That is a thing that is only there to annoy the French. <laughs> um, but... I have this long discussion with Italy, Italy is very, very angry at me. I basically say, yes, okay, we need to 100% go against France, they're the strongest power on this board. Let's put aside our differences and, you know, deal with them. Uh, and I even say, okay, as a gesture of goodwill, I'm going to take Budapest off the board. Um, which might look like madness from me here, but I think I couldn't... I probably couldn't hold Budapest anyway if Italy wanted to attack me. So I'm more than happy to, like, disband that as a show of support. <laughs> if it gets Italy on my side, it does far more than any army there could ever do. So, I want to try and convince Italy to stay on my side there. I, like... Obviously, I'd prefer him not to take Budapest, but I think I can convince him not to do that by saying I need the units against France here, um, otherwise I'm in trouble. And I'm looking at the position of the German up in the north, and I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> Germany is basically willing to give me everything right now. They're just going to suicide into France. How quickly should I do that? Should I go in and try and take everything at once? And the answer I came up with was no, I don't think I should. I can take one or two centers, I can take Sweden for example, I can take Munich off of the French, uh, because obviously Italy's going to be happy for me to take stuff off the French. But I don't want to actively show that Germany is giving up everything to me, because I think if that happens, I end up being the biggest threat on the board instead of France. And that determines a lot about where Italy ends up going here, I think. Okay, another quick breather. <laughs> uh, I really should have commentated this with Ezio instead, but whatever. Right. So you'll see I am helping Italy against Turkey here. I'm basically saying I'm going to cut down this position to three players. And I'm doing that on the assumption that Italy will try and demilitarize that area afterwards. So in order for me to get the board top, which is like board top is the most important thing in the scoring system, I need to figure out how I'm going to get the most centers, specifically more centers than France and more centers than Italy. If Italy ends up going for Budapest and Romania, I think Italy just kicks me out of contention. And that might seem like a great strategy to you if you're playing Italy. The problem with that is if you kick someone else of contention, they usually, especially if it's someone quite large, they usually have the power to decide who is going to 
board top who is going to win the game. So you don't want to actively do that. <laughs> you don't want to kick someone out of contention completely because you want them to still be fighting for their chance at the board top so that they don't just go, okay, I have to decide between these two other people, one of whom screwed me and one of whom I was fighting the whole time. I'm obviously going to choose the person I was fighting the whole time, that would be France, uh, because the other person screwed me. So, I do actually go here, okay, Italy, I'm going to keep you on side, I'm going to give you Budapest. Um, because I was thinking, okay, I'm gaining Sweden and Denmark, I'm probably gaining Munich and Berlin at the same time. So I am actively taking all of the German centers, I, <laughs> I've forgotten I did that this turn. Um, I think it actually fails to work to some extent, so... But yeah, we'll get back to that in a second. Um... So I take Norway and Sweden, no, I take Sweden, Denmark, Berlin, and Munich under this agreement. Uh, Italy would take Budapest and Bulgaria, so I would end up going plus three, and Italy would end up going plus two, which keeps us relatively even. I want to make sure that it looks like I'm favoring Italy in this alliance, because I do not want Italy to stab me properly. If they side with Turkey... <laughs> I'm in a much, much worse position. And if they side with France, I'm in an even worse position. So I, I want no possibility of that happening. Um, you will notice there's a few phases here where we end up getting double phases. This is because someone didn't enter their orders in time. Uh, unfortunately. Hopefully this will be less of a thing in the future. I guess we'll see. Alright, so right now I am just sitting around waiting for the phase to go through, and there you go, everyone readied up, and you can see my attempt to take Berlin didn't actually work. I was hoping to get all four centers I was aiming for, I end up just getting uh, three, Sweden, Denmark, Munich, and I lose Budapest and Bulgaria, so I end up just building two instead of three. Two is still a pretty solid number. Um, and this is the point in the game where I finally build a fleet. And that's, uh, <laughs> that's kind of an interesting one. Um, it's super late. The main reason that I build a fleet here is so that I have units to tap North Sea if I need to. Uh, it's not actually so that I can push past, uh, Edinburgh, Liverpool, London. I still think they're out of reach, especially since this is a game capped at 1910. I should have mentioned that earlier, actually. This game ends in winter 1910. Um, it's more so to make sure that if I take Kiel and Berlin, I keep Kiel and Berlin. So, I outside of that, I had the possibility to build a fleet in St. Petersburg, or I had the possibility to build an army in... Uh, wait, no. I had the possibility to build a fleet in St. Petersburg. The second build, I could have waved and then put another fleet in St. Petersburg, or I can put an army in Warsaw or Moscow, right? Obviously, Italy's preference out of those is probably going to be build fleet St. Petersburg on the second turn. I wanted to find an excuse for building army Warsaw, because I think that army Warsaw might be a necessity here if I end up with just... Because Kiel and Berlin are pretty takeable right now. Um, I'm thinking, how am I going to top this board? I probably need to take Vienna and Budapest. Those are my two goals past this point. To knock, you know, both to knock Italy out of contention a bit, and to make sure that I have, you know, I, I go over the top in terms of the number of supply centers that I have. I think that puts me on 13 if I count all of them. Um, it's tough to do math at this speed. But yeah, um, so I wanted the excuse to put Warsaw down. I end up talking to Italy about it, and basically he says uh, he wants to put down Army Venice. I'm like, okay, if you put down Army Venice, I want to put down Army Warsaw, and he says sure. Uh, so we end up agreeing to it on those terms. And then we have this kind of interesting situation in the next phase, right? Where France is still a massive threat for the board top, they still have, I think, uh, 
10 sensors? No, they have 9 sensors right now, potentially 10 locked in. Um, but I'm suddenly also quite a big threat to the board top. So Italy has the possibility of making up with Turkey and attacking me. Uh, I have the possibility of trying to get the jump on Italy so that I can secure my own board top here. Uh, because right now I'm on, I think, 9 as well. So I'm going to go 10, 11. Yeah, uh, Kiel and Berlin puts me on 11. Which might be enough, but also might not if, if Italy can uh, get some sensors either out of Turkey or out of me. We're in a really interesting position where it's kind of advantageous for both of us to attack each other, but at the same time, if I'm not attacking Italy, Italy could probably get a board top out of taking Turkey. So he's got to make that decision. And Turkey actually asks me, do you want support to Bulgaria here? And that just goes, okay, yeah, I guess I'm 100% attacking Italy right now, because if I have support into Bulgaria, I can surround his position immediately. Um, and that hopefully gives me what I need in the south. I'm definitely not going to be able to keep Bulgaria. Bulgaria is a really, like, difficult to defend province. <laughs> but it, it's... The actual position, just having a unit there in the first place is super important. Um, just because it can tap Serbia on the future turn. So you see, I end up... Uh, going into Bulgaria here, I get into Romania, I get into Galicia, I get into Bohemia. That is just beautiful position for me. Uh, it's still not perfect. Bulgaria is like 100% getting blown up here. I still have some tricky decisions to make on Budapest and Serbia. Uh, remember, if I move... So there is the possibility of moving Romania in, like I was doing there and supporting, but then Serbia could end up in Romania if it goes to try and tap Romania. And that's something I really didn't want to happen. Um, so I was like juggling, should I go for Vienna, should I go for Budapest uh, with two, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Um, at the end of the day, I think I decided that Vienna was probably not going to be covered, that he would probably do Serbia support hold Budapest or Serbia attacks. Romania would support from Budapest, something like that. Uh, because that seems like the less likely option. And I think Italy is a good enough player that they're kind of anal uh, analyzing this and going, what's he expecting me to do? Um, so I was kind of predicting the less likely option. I think in this case it ends up biting me because he does defend Vienna with one. And you see the moveset that I have in right here with uh, the double attack on Vienna um, would have gotten into Vienna pretty easily and Vienna is a nicer position to be in than Budapest, that's just uh, just because it, it encircles Budapest right okay, something else you may be noticing here is the German turning around in the north, so I was kind of relying on the German continuing to throw against the French he did not do so, as you can see <laughs> He turned around and started defending himself, and that's completely fair. It was just very irritating for me, because I was like, oh, I was kind of counting on Vien on, on Kiel and Berlin being free. So now suddenly I need to fight my way through up there. Uh, thankfully, I'm getting a build this phase, because I did take Budapest, and this actually goes to show how vital it was that I attacked uh, Italy right here and now. Because if I had not attacked Italy right here and now, I would either have had to pull more stuff up north to defend against this random Prussian unit that's ended up coming into my lands, uh, or I would have, which would have opened myself up to the Italian attack, uh, or I would have just had to not make the gains in the north that I was looking for, and that could have been a really tough position. At this point, it's kind of just a matter of uh, wait and see the ending. I think I end up fighting everyone except Turkey for basically the entire remainder of this game. Um, it's purely tactical and not massively interesting on that front. Uh, there's a couple of things that are interesting. Okay, Warsaw to Moscow is an interesting one here. 
Um, that's because Prussia could have gone through to Livonia, Prussia could go to Warsaw. If Prussia goes to Warsaw here uh, and takes it, obviously it would have been better for me to hold Warsaw if that happens. But I still have Cilicia in place to force uh, Warsaw out. So the move back to Moscow both allows me to defend against a move to Livonia with Prussia, and more importantly, it lets me defend against Constantinople to Black Sea, Syria to Armenia, which I thought was a real possibility here. There was a possibility that Turkey is just going to make a runner for my southern centers because there's no way he can push through Bulgaria or Aegean, especially since I don't really have the position to actually help him. So that that was a little bit of a tactical exercise there. Um, outside of that, it's all kind of trivial. It ends up being just push as hard as you can into those centers. I do end up taking them, and I end up getting my position on Vienna, Budapest, Romania, um, and I get into Berlin and Kiel, which was exactly what I was looking for. The one thing that doesn't quite go my way is if you look up in the north, the French units have finally come to uh, visit Scandinavia. And I was basically going through all this time, hey, you know, please, 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 just take Holland and Belgium. It gives you a great position for a potential board top, um, and it gets this bloody German off my back. <laughs> but France would not listen to that. And that's also completely reasonable because the scoring system we're using is Summer Squares. And in Summer Squares, you lose points if someone else gets massively larger than you. So you want to restrict the growth of the largest power. You do also want to grow yourself. The board top is the most important thing. But restricting Russia's growth in this case is a perfectly reasonable play from them. So I'm going to end up losing Norway here. Most of my thinking on this phase is just how am I going to get that back? Uh, do I want to... So Germany wants me to tap North Sea. I'm like, sure, I'll do that. In return, you, you get rid of uh, Prussia at the end of this phase and I'll make sure you stay alive in Holland, Belgium um, by just tapping there. I mean, tapping north is totally fine here. There's nothing I can do to defend Norway anyway. I'm now thinking, okay, how do I take back Norway on the next turn? I guess I can move Denmark to Sweden. And that's what I end up doing. I put in a move of Denmark to Sweden. And the idea behind that is Norway is going to retreat to Skagerrak. I get a build in St. Petersburg. So then I have three units against Francis II. I should be able to push them right back out. Do you see the issue with this? <laughs> because there is one. The issue with this is that Denmark is completely open. So I do need to have a unit ready to cover it. I figured this could be Kiel. But at the end of the day, Kiel is actually really hard to vacate because it's got the German unit right next to it in Holland. Um, and while you could say you can cover Kiel from Berlin or Munich in return, but the problem is Berlin actually has to support hold Munich in this position because the Italian is in Tyrolia and the French person is in Burgundy. So it's an awkward position there. Everything in the south is completely locked on what it, it has to do. You can see I'm doing a defense by movement here. That is, Romania taps Serbia to prevent any support against Budapest. Vienna taps Trieste to prevent any support against Budapest, so there's no potential supported attack they can make there. Um, Bohemia attacks Tyrolia, and Budapest attacks Trieste, and those prevent any supported attack against Vienna. So it's defense by a thousand cuts, I think, is the official term for it. Um, but it means that I have to lock all of my units into doing these moves. Their Bohemia support hold Vienna, and Romania support hold Budapest would also work, but looks slightly less fancy. So, <laughs> you know, might as well try to do this. This also uh, prevents if Trieste tries to move to Albania and then Vienna comes into Trieste uh, with Tyrolia support, for example. This prevents that 100% working. 
I'm thinking about this position, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, hmm, okay, there is the Italian army in Greece. There is the Italian army in Greece that could be a nuisance if it gets to Bulgaria, but Turkey is on my side, so that shouldn't be an issue. And, in fact, it just ends up support holding Serbia for the entire time, so that's fine by me. Um, everything goes pretty much as I expected it to, and I have some build options. I think I get two builds here? Yeah. So I can build Fleet North Coast St. Petersburg, and I could build Army Sevastopol, but I decide to build Army Moscow instead for two reasons. One reason for that is that Sevastopol, uh, obviously, if I build an army Sevastopol, I think I'm inviting Turkey to bounce in Armenia, because I think that they kind of have to. They can't leave their homeland undefended against something like that, and I really don't want to make the Turk turn around. So I just want to keep them as placated as possible. Um, <laughs> I will stay in this position. So yeah, this is a tactical exercise at this point. I think there might have been better ways to handle what I did in the uh, north here. Um, there was the option of supporting Sweden into Norway with St. Petersburg support. But I don't think that that... Uh, I think that that has some flaw. I can't remember what it is. I guess it's just the fact that Denmark is open. Right, because if Sweden stays in Sweden, then if the French player goes for Denmark, I end up being able to repel them out of Denmark. So it's just kind of a guessing game here. If they had gone to Denmark, this kind of counters most of what they could do. The fact that they didn't means that this ends up being bad, and... I end up moving Moscow to Ukraine, which is actually a big mistake here. Um, if I had kept it in Moscow, I could have just covered St. Petersburg with it. There was no real reason I needed it in Romania. Galicia could have support held Romania if Greece backfilled Bulgaria here, so it should have stayed in Moscow. Worst case scenario, like, the, the real reason you want it able to protect the south is in case Turkey goes into Black Sea and Armenia. And if they do that, Moscow is just as good a province as Ukraine. You don't need to do this. So we're going to see a French retreat into the Barents Sea here. Um, and then <laughs> you will just see... You, you see I was about to send England a message saying they're still around. I, I decided against that. That would probably be like... They probably just want to rest at this point. Um, so I then asked in Global, hey, can someone flip a coin? I need to decide between defending Norway or defending St. Petersburg. There was the option of supporting into Norway, going back to St. Petersburg to defend both. Problem with that is that Norway is a French center. So if I bounce out of Norway, it remains French. So the supported attack into Norway doesn't actually work. And I end up deciding on this uh, configuration, holding in Norway and protecting Denmark for a little while. And then I think about it, and I think, hmm, actually I think he's more likely to just go for Denmark and St. Petersburg rather than dedicate two units to an attack on Norway. So I end up changing it. Um... You will probably see that in a second. Uh, and that ends up being the correct thing to do, because he does actually bounce me in St. Petersburg. So with that... <laughs> oh yeah, the one other thing that happens this phase is I, I'm able to uh, support Constantinople to Bulgaria. There is no way that should have worked, I think. But... It, it does end up working. Turkey gets in and ends up taking Italy down one more center, and that's really important in some squares because you want the big opponents to be small um, and yourself to be as large as possible. So reducing Italy by one actually boosts my score by a fair bit here. Um, as you can see, I end up taking Norway. Uh, I end up bouncing in St. Petersburg. I don't take anything else. But that's enough for me to have 13 centers against, I believe, France's 10 
uh, and Italy's 9. It might be France's 9 and Italy's 8, actually. Um, and Turkey ends up on 4, Germany ends up on 2 in Holland and Belgium. And that's enough for 56 out of a possible uh, 100 points um, in the Summer Square system. So I'm pretty happy with this. <laughs> it was a good result. Um, the game was great fun. These five minute per phase games, they're pretty intense, but they are great fun to play, um, and they do take a lot less time than a standard diplomacy game does. Obviously an online standard diplomacy game takes months, um, but they take less time than, say, a voice chat game, which is 15 minute per phase. That would usually run eight hours. Um, this tends to run two to three which is just much nicer. <laughs> so, really enjoyed this. If you're interested in playing uh, Speed Press, then join the Nexus League's Discord server. Uh, I really hope to see some of you there, and I hope you enjoyed this.